What's up, YouTube? I'm over here doing sumo deadlifts today. The sun is setting right in front of me. I figure it'd be a good time for me to chat with you since I'm doing one rep per minute. So I have a lot of rest time in between. And uh, I haven't really done very many sumo deadlifts. So it's a little bit of an awkward exercise for me, but my coach programmed it into my routine because it's similar to a kind of deadlift I'll be doing in, uh, in the competition I have coming up. So this is probably uh, about 60% of what I'll be using in the show coming up here in a couple, couple months. So let's see what it feels like. <clears throat> and uh, I'm using straps and belt because they're pieces of equipment that you gotta get practice using, especially if I'm gonna be using them in the show. So I could lift this without it, but just wanna get a good feel for this. Hey, you know, it's been a long time since I just chat with you guys while I'm lifting. I remember back in the day, I used to set up my camera and, and talk to you guys while I'm in between sets and stuff like that. I figured I'd do that today. And uh, that's something I want to talk to you about. I don't know if it's because of the conditioning or maybe it's something that's just inside certain people, but there's this sense that you're made for greatness. And I know like, you know, maybe I'm, Hey, I'm talking shit about Disney, but the bit Disney character, the main character is always like some down and out dude, some poor slap dick, some oppressed woman, little girl that in her heart she believes or he believes that he's destined for something great. But like all the odds are against him or her. And so it's sort of like a you know, impossible journey. This is gonna be my first working set. And uh, I'm gonna hit this button here. I'm doing 10 reps every minute on the minute. The minute just started, so let me get going with this. I'm gonna be a little bit behind. I'll start. So, you know, the underdog story is really what it's all about. And I think that's what movies do. They sort of put us in the place of the main character. And if the main character is an underdog, we tend to think, or we tend to sort of experience vicariously through that person, the overcoming of challenge. Joseph Campbell called it the hero's journey. And so I, I you know, and Carl Jung said that's an archetype, like it's a pattern. We recognize it in the movies, but the movies are just patterning it really after our cycles of life. Like everybody goes through these hero's journeys. And I think we go through multiple hero's journeys in our lives. You know, it's not just a coming of age, little boy becomes a man sort of thing. It's something that happens you know, multiple times through our life, and it could even have multiple cycles within a cycle. <sighs> like their little hero's journeys, like, you know, getting up in the morning, facing the day, getting to work or school, doing the thing that, you know, taking the test, overcoming the test, the mentor, the girl, the trial, overcoming, triumph, and then coming back home, right? Like, it's kind of funny, but that's like every day is a hero's journey. And then I think we have sort of bigger journeys, 12-year journeys, man. But that's not the point of this video is to talk about these 12-year cycles. Point of the video is to sort of acknowledge you as I reflect on my hero's journeys, starting them, ending them, time to go. <clears throat> <sighs> 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 
And uh, there are going to be times when you're down. You know, in most part, in the, for the most part, we start when we're down, right? Like when you're a baby, you're down. Somebody puts you down, you're down. You're a squirmy little piece of shit that uh, <laughs> can't do anything. And then it's a journey to rising to your feet. Like that's a journey itself. Stumble, fall, try. Somebody helps me, right? Bust my face, get back up. And then, we, and then we're walking. You know, we're the only animal that walk on two feet. And you can take that for granted, but that was a journey. <laughs> that was triumph over the odds. I mean, every step that you take, right, is like a balancing act, right? Being a bipedal human being. So you've overcome a lot. You're, you're a triumphant being. You and I have triumphed in ways that we don't give ourselves credit for. It's not always a big, spectacular triumph, but a little basic triumphs of overcoming the, the, when the odds are against you, like when you just can't walk. <sighs> right? First day of school, that's a journey too. You triumph, you, you overcome the resistance of leaving your parents, going to school for the first time, your first girlfriend, the first time you drive, first time you score a touchdown, make the team. What I think is really interesting though, is we live in a time where, you know, the Disney movies put it on Hollywood blast for everybody to see. But now with the internet, the movie star is you and me. And today I've just been reflecting on how before I even knew what I was doing, I had no idea that when I was setting up my camera and I was talking to the camera and I was answering questions, uh, you know, 10 years ago, 2024, 2014 was, you know, I was slaying dragons and at the peak of the mountain. And I, and at that time I couldn't see the next journey ahead of me. All I could do is bask on top of the mountain. That's almost like if the baby start, started walking and when it got to his feet and started walking, it was like, hey, this is it. I made it. I made it. I've overcome. I'm on top of the world. There's nothing left to do. Imagine that. Well, then you'd never run. You'd never jump. You'd never skip. You'd never do all the other things that are possible after achieving one step on the journey. Well, I'll tell you, you got multiple steps and I don't think it ends until you get to the last step, which is death. <sighs> the last step is death. But I couldn't see that. I'm a short-sighted person. I'm nearsighted. Literally, I have myopia. Like I had to wear glasses. I literally have myopia and I couldn't see the next journey ahead of me. And it wasn't until I hit rock bottom after climbing to the top that I started doing some investigation. And that's how I discovered these cycles. And uh, I came across a book by a woman nonetheless. Alison Armstrong was her name. And the book was titled The Amazing Development of Men. And she describes a grand journey that a man goes on from what she calls being a page to a young warrior, middle warrior, top of the mountain warrior, right? So in retrospect, I realized I was a warrior, still a warrior, not a king or an elder at the top of the mountain. And if you're on top of the mountain, of course you've overcome, but the bigger mountain is over there. And the only way you get to the other mountain, which is over there, which is the king mountain, is you got to climb down the warrior mountain, right? Little warrior, middle warrior, big warrior. And if you want to get to the mountain, you got to climb off the warrior mountain and then start the ascent up the king mountain. And that usually happens when a man is about middle age. For me, it happened a little earlier. I kind of grow up fast 
I got married early, started having children early. I'm just a, I'm an old young man. I've always been an old young man. I've always been the oldest and the first. And so I knew at age 36, right? A lot of you guys, you're, you're, a lot of you guys are still on the way up that mountain. You haven't reached the peak yet. And that's okay. I mean, man, that climb up, being ignorant of the fact that you're climbing is a good thing because <laughs> you just put your head down and you climb. But when you get to, I'm kind of warning you in a way a little bit, just sharing my experience with you. When you get to the top of that first mountain, maybe you make your first million dollars or you marry the girl of your dreams and start a family or you achieve, like for me, I was winning trophies, I was winning plaques, <laughs> I, you know, my family was growing, YouTube channels growing, I was making money, and I thought I was on the top of the mountain that was the only mountain, and as a result, I sat down. Don't sit down when you're at the top of the mountain, brothers, but also, Remember that you are at a peak. You are at a peak. And so when you're at that peak, you gotta celebrate, but then realize there has to be what Robert Bly calls a catabasis in his book, Iron John. Catabasis, the word catabasis means going down. As I'm about to go down and do this next lift, hold on. I'm not even keeping track. I'm not even focused here today because I'm talking to you. <sighs> catabasis. A catabasis means going down. But you don't go down to stay down. You go down realizing. This is important. Like if you're in a down moment in your life right now, even if you're not 36, 37, 38, like this whole last cycle for me in my life, these last 12 years have literally been going down. That that going down is not a being left out. That going down is to go retrieve something. You go down because there's something down there that you left. <laughs> There are parts of you that you deny. There are parts of you that you forgot. There are parts of you that you split off because you couldn't carry them up the mountain with you, right? Maybe they're wounds, whatever it is. And you know, I got plenty of wounds. As I'm climbing the mountain, because I'm such a tough guy, I'm, a, I'm just, you know, I love the pain. I love, that's why I'm doing this right now. I love the pain. So I just stuffed that stuff down and climbed to the mountain and said, hey, pussy, you stay down there. Soft boy, you stay down there. Baby boy, wounded boy, inner child, you stay down there, boy. Get your ass down there. I'm climbing. And uh, I got to the top of the mountain and I realized, boy, this is, at some point I realized this ain't it. This ain't it. It's not over. It's like I literally had to climb back down. And you're going to do the same thing to go grab that wounded part of you. And that's a part of the journey that the Disney movies don't tell us. Because, you know, the young prince or the princess or the main character, they get to the top of the mountain and they say, happily ever after. Without telling you the truth about the fact that you're going to have to climb off that mountain now. And sometimes it's worse for other, certain people, it's worse. My climbing down the mountain was nice. I live in luxury. I created a lot of momentum and wealth for myself. I, I have a happy, happy, happy family, a good family. We've had our struggles and challenges because I got teenage girls. But we navigate those with grace, and God has been good. So I, I've been lucky. And I think I've been lucky in a lot of instances, and I think that's why God puts me in a place that I am in order to... To, to spread positivity and to share my blessings with you through whatever wisdom I gain along the way. I got one more rep here. And 
And so, you know, no matter how hard it gets for you, just recognize that life is cyclical. So going down, all going down means is that you're gonna, you're gonna come right back up. You have to come back up. Just like the sun, look, the sun is setting right now. The sun is going down. The sun is going down. It's disappearing over the horizon. Am I supposed to freak out? Am I supposed to be depressed? When that sun goes down, it's going to be pitch dark. Does that mean that I'm lost? Does that mean there's no hope? No. It's a normal, natural, inevitable, necessary part of life. And I would be stupid to not recognize the pattern that it's going to rise again. And you're going to rise again. I'm going to rise again. We all rise again. I think that's a part of what Jesus is teaching us in the resurrection. Hey, you go down. The world will beat you up. The world will beat you up. Crucify you. Right? But you can rise again. Every day you get up after a Long slumber, darkness, nightmares. How many of you guys have nightmares when you're sleeping? Going to sleep is not an easy thing for a lot of people. They got to take pills and shit because they're so freaked out for going into the dark. Going into the nightmare, going into the solitude, the coolness, the desolation, desolation, desol, no sun. That's what the word desolation means to de-sol, S-O-L, Asian. But then in the morning there's consolation. You rise with, con is with, sol, sun, Asian. It's the same way the sun goes down, I'm watching that sun go down. It's gonna be dark here in a moment. It may be dark in your life right now. Fellas, there's no doubt about it. As long as you stay patient and keep your eyes on the horizon, that sun is going to rise again in your life. Guaranteed. It's only nature, dude. There is one thing, though, that will delay the process and slow it down. And that is if you resist it. If you resist the, if you resist the night, you're like those people who have insomnia. The sun is going to come up, but you're not going to have consolation because you're still feeling down. You didn't sleep at night. When it's winter time, let it be winter because it nourishes the earth. It, it sterilizes the soil. When it's nighttime, let it be nighttime because that's when you grow on the inside. That's when your hormones are blasting and all the recovery in your brain, your nervous system. And when your life is down and there's not a whole lot of activity, people don't love you like they once loved you, it seems like there's nothing but pure desolation don't freak out. Don't fret. Be patient. And allow the sun to rise again. And you, you rise with it. And that's my consolation for you today, dudes. Done.